All right, today's the day, everyone. We're gonna put these heads on this engine. And quite honestly, it couldn't come soon enough. I'm tired of doing cleaning and research. I literally just wanna to get to assembly and get these heads on and get this car going again. So in this video, we're gonna talk about GT40 three bar heads and the variations of those. They're Macter holes using um, head studs as opposed to head bolts and also proper torque sequencing. So there's a lot to do today. Let's get right to it. Before we start on the heads, let's just quickly take a look at the motor and how I got it to shine up so nicely. Um, here's a before picture. And this is of course the after. And it had about 3,000 miles on it or so and a little bit more carbon than I was expecting. So I don't know, um, I used this gasket scraper in order to uh, clean the deck, but I also used it to clear the tops of the pistons. Um, if you have used the razor blade style, uh, the flimsy ones, buy this thing. It is worth its weight in gold. I generally don't tell people to get something, but I will tell you, get this. Um, it's got a very sharp edge and it does wonders to get gaskets off. It's seriously a huge time saver. I'll link this in the description, but I got mine at O'Reilly, but I'm sure these are on Amazon as well. Um, but anyway, in order to get the tops of the pistons, I simply just rotated the crank here and then just clean the top of the pistons. Did so very carefully because you don't want to gouge uh, the tops of your pistons, anything like that. As far as prepping the block goes for the cylinder head swap, what I needed to do was make sure that our uh, stud holes are all nice and clean. So I took a thread chaser and just chased out all these holes and got all the gunk out of them. You also wanna make sure that you don't have antifreeze in your water jacket. So you'll need to take a small hose. As you can see my hose down there, uh, this is what I used. I literally just stuck one end into the water jacket here and then siphoned it down and out into that catch pan. And that way uh, we're not installing our studs into antifreeze. We don't wanna do that. We wanna make sure our uh, coolant levels are down and I'm not making sure that our bolts aren't coming in contact with the fluid. It, they will eventually, but we're gonna use the sealer in order to prevent those from coming out and leaking out the block. So that is just some of the uh, steps I had to take in order to kind of prep this block to accept the heads, but we are done with all that nonsense. Now we can go ahead and get the heads on. So real quick, let's take a look at the old E7 heads and what are called thermactor holes. This is part of the E7 emission system. And as you can see, um, it's kind of just filled with carbon and other junk. I had a plug on it and it looks, you know, similar to that. It was that plug right there in the back. And um, I was curious if I needed to take those plugs from the E7 and put them on the GT40s, but I don't need to do that. And here's why. Uh, these are F1ZEAAs. That means these came off of an Explorer. If they said F3ZEAA, that would indicate that they came off of a Cobra. Cobras had the thermacta holes. Some Explorers did not. I'm not saying every Explorer GT40 three bar head didn't have thermacta holes. I'm saying these don't. So really you're just gonna need to study your head and see what you have. I'm glad these don't have the holes. It'll just make installation a little bit easier, less to transfer over. All right, it's time to get our gasket on. We've got our dowels inserted. These just pop in and out um, if you were wondering, but these will help us keep our head gasket on as well as keep our head on when we need to finally torque it down. And these, this engine is board 30 over. Uh, these gaskets are what I'm using. Um, I will link these in the description. They got great reviews and they weren't too uh, expensive. So uh, two pluses for these. And all we need to do now is get the head on. We're gonna put the studs in after the head. ARP recommends you do it that way. Um, to kind of inhibit damaging the tops of the um, threads if you were to install the studs first and then put the head on. So we're going to get the head on and then we'll put the studs on. Now preferably you'd want a couple sets of hands to do this. These things are not light by any stretch, but we're going to see if we can muscle these on without too much problems. I might have hit it right on the head there. No pun intended. Nope, sure didn't. Got that guy on. Got that one on. That actually wasn't too bad. All right, we got the head on so we can put the studs on. These are the upper studs uh, for the top here by the intake. 
And these uh, shorter ones are for the bottom down by the exhaust uh, manifold or headers in my case, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, these are the ones that will be sticking into your water jackets. So we need to do something about that in order to seal these threads so you don't have coolant leaking out of your heads. Well, Loctite make, makes a product for that. It's this stuff right here. And uh, this is what I would recommend to use. This is what I used before and it worked great, sealed them fine. This stuff is a bit pricey though, guys, so shop around. Amazon was the cheapest I found it. It was cheaper by about $10. Uh, so I will put a link in, in the description for this as well as these head studs in case you're doing a 302 build just like me. All right, now when applying our thread sealant, we're gonna be very liberal with this. We are going to install a good deal of it. We don't want our studs leaking at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply more than I typically would um, if I was just you know using thread locker or something like that. This should be good. This should treat us just fine. Let me zoom in a little bit. There we go. Uh, this amount, I'm just kind of doing four sides. You'd probably get away with two, but we're not taking any chances with this. So let's install this head stud. Okay, so don't go thinking you need to torque these. We've got an 1130 seconds Allen key. We're just gonna do that. That's, that's literally it. You don't wanna torque those down at all. You wanna make sure that you are just hand tightening those. All right, we've got all the lower studs in. Now we just need to get uh, these longer upper ones in. And we don't need to apply anything to these. All we need to do is uh, spin them on and we'll be good to go. Remember, do not torque these. These only go in hand tight. You just wanna make sure that they're seated, that's it. Here we go, stop, so we're good. All right, and I've got the passenger side head on, but I actually had to put it on twice uh, because as I put the lower studs in, they are going in quite difficult and I had to reverse them back out, which in itself was extremely difficult. And what had happened was, is that I forgot to chase those threads and get them all cleaned out from the previous uh, sealer that I had in there. So uh, the studs weren't going in well and then reversing them out was honestly extremely hard to do and I'm glad I didn't break anything doing it. I thought I would. Um, don't skip that step. I'm going to link some uh, thread chasers in the description, but make sure you do it and don't forget. All right, now finally we can get to torquing the nuts and what I'm going to do is use this uh, fastener assembly lube by ARP. This stuff I've um, always tested better as far as torque readings go than engine oil. I used uh, synthetic motor oil the last time I put heads on this car. Uh, but I'm going with this this time just because the research showed that it was so much uh, better as far as consistency than anything else. So using this, I will link it in the description as well. But basically, we just need to kind of coat the underside of our washers. Then you can either put it on this side or the underside of a head of the nut. But uh, basically, we'll just put that on. And we'll get a nut here. And we just need it right on the rim. Just make sure it gets nice and uh, moved around there. I probably need a little bit more. Just like that. So um, then we'll just need to thread that on. And we'll do that for each one. All right, everyone. I know the motor looks a little bit farther down the road, and that's because it is. All of that is loose installed, though. Nothing's tight. I had to do that because I lost one of the stud nuts. So I had to source one, wait for shipping, and it finally arrived yesterday so we can continue on. Let's get this done. All right, let's get to it. The sequence for torquing these heads down. We're gonna go number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, number 10. So that's the proper sequence. We're going to be torquing these in three separate steps. You'll want to check whether or not if you've got head studs, what the manufacturer recommends. These need to be 80 foot pounds. Um, head bolts are probably different, so check with the specs on those. But we're going to go three equal steps. We're going to go 40, 60, 80. So we're going to do three steps on these heads.
All right, finally, the heads are properly torqued on. An even bigger thing, we get to move on. Uh, it's funny how one little part can stop the show for one week, two weeks, whatever. But anyway, uh, for the next video, what I'm going to be doing is tightening down our valve train. Uh, we're gonna do that properly, uh, moving through each cylinder at a time. Also gonna show you how to find top dead center on the compression stroke on the number one cylinder. That way we can be sure we get a good start the first time this car's fired up. So uh, hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more. Hit like, it does help the channel, I swear. Anyway, I hope this uh, little video helped in your build. Have a great rest of the day.